Hello, in this third in a series of videos about different UML and SysML diagrams in Rhapsody, I'm going to cover use case diagrams. Use case diagrams are a type of behavior diagram and they go right back to the origins of the unified modeling language in 1996. Use cases came from a methodologist called Ivor Jakobsen, whose object-oriented methodology at the time focused on understanding the usage of the system as a set of steps called use cases and using these to identify objects that might be realized in an object-oriented design. If I was going to build an air traffic control system, for example, I might write the use case of how an air traffic controller performs a series of steps to control a flight and then use these steps to identify candidate classes that might exist in the design such as aircraft, aircraft routes, flight plans and airspaces such as special used airspaces. I'm going to show you this with Rhapsody 8.4 and I'm going to quickly use one of the helper profiles I created called the executable MBSE profile to do this. So let's create a project called Use Cases Example. Essentially the profile helper here uses Rhapsody's Java API to automate steps to bootstrap the model with a SysML profile and a package structure that includes a use case diagram and a shared actors package. Let's create a use case diagram for a dancer. A dancer is a system that exhibits emergent behavior based on a combination of components that includes arms, legs, hands and a torso. The use case diagram essentially gives a functional context diagram where the use cases are stories about how the system is used and actors represent roles played by elements outside the system that interact with it. If this system represents a dancer, then outside the system, interacting with the system or getting value from the system might be an audience. Another actor that the system interacts with or participates in the use case might be a dance floor. A use case for the dancer system where the audience gets values might be to perform a dance. Use cases define the offered behaviours without reference to the internal structure of the system. These behaviours involve interactions with the actors and the subject and may result in changes in the state of the system. If we work our way through some of the elements in the toolbar, an association between an actor and a use case tells us that the actor participates in the use case. The main thing for me is that use case diagrams doesn't tell us the steps of the story, just that the story exists. The diagram is therefore a 30,000 foot view of the system and it's a bit like an index of a library where each use case represents a book describing a story about how the system is used. Actors by convention are always outside of the system, however we can add a boundary or subject box here to make the subject of the use case clearer. In this case I'm saying that the subject of the use case is the dancer. It's important that you don't put the system or anything inside the system as an actor. Of course, it's possible for the system to interact with another dancer. The role that the other dancer might play with respect to the system in this case is as a dance partner. The same person may also play other roles, for example, as a spouse, but the use cases that that actor would play would be very different. A use case is an end-to-end -end use of the system to perform something of value with respect to an actor. And we should try to keep the use cases as big as possible. It's very easy with use cases to turn steak into mincemeat. Let's look at three different types of relationship we might use between use cases, however. Generalization, include and extend. Suppose that there are different types of dances and that each type of dance has a fundamentally different set of steps. But they all involve an audience and a dance floor. Well, I could call each of these dances out as a separate use case, and then use generalization to say that they all types of the performing a dance base use case. Essentially, I wouldn't write the steps of performing a dance in this case. Gangnam style and performing a waltz are both types of performing a dance. However, the steps are very different and the performer waltz involves a partner. Note how the generalization means that the specialized use cases inherit the relations of the base use case. If we didn't use generalization, then we'd need to draw associations to both the performer Gangnam style and performer waltz use cases for both of the actors. We'd lose some of the meaning conveyed by the generalization relationship in this case 
and would also end up with lots of crossing lines, making the diagram less easy to understand. The include and extend relations are two other ways we can show relationships between use cases. A use case is defined as a set of steps that includes alternate steps. Sometimes we want to write these alternate steps separately so that they don't pollute the base use case. We can do this by adding an extends use case. For example, dealing with a sprain might include a lot of steps, such as icing the limb and elevating to reduce circulation. But we don't really want to write these steps as part of the perform a dance use case, so we factored them out. Note the direction of the dependency here. The perform a dance use case is not dependent on dealing with a sprain. Let's make a little more room. In Rhapsody, if I hold down the Alt key, then I can resize a container element without resizing its inner elements. It's important to remember that a use case is defined as a set of steps that include alternate flows. It's essentially a story that shows the use of the system. The use case diagram does not describe the steps of the story, and therefore it really just tells us that the story exists. We can describe the use case in many ways. I often use activity diagrams. My free helper here, conveyed by the profile, works on the double-click hook and creates a new diagram from a template. I might say that the trigger for the use case is the dance partner taking the dancer by the hand. And, as you all know, to dance the waltz, you need to perform a set of steps. For example, stepping forward with the left foot, and then taking the right foot and stepping sideways to the right. You then bring your left foot next to your right foot, step back with the right foot, step back sideways with the left foot, and bring your right foot next to your left foot. Of course, you might not have known this, or you might have got these steps wrong, and hence it helps to write them down and review them with experts. This is only if you're taking the lead, of course. If you're the follower, then you have to do something different. This is where an alternate flow might come in. When playing the female, the dancer would start by putting their right foot forward. Obviously, I'm not going to do all the steps here, so um, but it gives you an appreciation of what the use case is. So let's now return to the use case diagram. Now, sometimes we have a set of steps that get reused in more than one other use case, which is where the include relation comes in. I'm not saying that I would do it like this, nor would I recommend using include relationships if you can get away without them. However, suppose that I determine that both Gangnam Style and Performing a Waltz need to start with a warm-up. Well, I could write the steps for warm-up separately and then include them from the use case that would require them. My tips are really that you should only do an include when you've written steps that you think need to be factored out and when you've identified two or more use cases that need them. Resist the urge if you can. Secondly, make sure that the included use case is chunky enough to factor out the steps. Since I start to use relationships like this, then it can make my diagram less clearer and more esoteric. This works against the original goal of the use case diagram, which is to work with customers and users to understand how the system is used before you start to build it. So that's it really, the use case diagram, a high level functional context diagram that gives a 30,000 foot view about what the system does for whom. I particularly like the idea that use cases are very complementary to requirements. I often put the goals of the system as textual requirements. For example, the dancer should be capable of leading a waltz. Also, I like the idea that the use case diagram should be created collectively and they're a good requirements elicitation vehicle if done well, particularly as they focus on clearly understanding the system boundary. If I change the system boundary, then it could quite dramatically change the actors and the use cases. In this example, if I made the system boundary a dance couple, then the dance partner would no longer be external to the system and the performer Gangnam style dance not be a use case of the system 
as it's not an emergent behavior realized by a dance couple. Hopefully that helps. If you feel inclined, then feel free to go away and try the steps yourself or with a partner. My name is Fraser Chadburn. I specialize in tool-based training and consulting in IBM products, and in particular, setting up Rhapsody using domain-specific profiles. My other area of expertise is easing modeling by using Java automation and profiles to speed up and simplify modeling tasks so that users can focus on creative and fun systems and software engineering. If you do have any questions, then feel free to contact me. Here's my email address.